If there's crimes against humanity being exercised right now, I don't believe that it's in a military lab. I believe that it's in those ICUs of dying patients alone. In what time in history have we decided that we need to, in mass, uh, let our let people die alone? Marines are taught to never leave a soldier on the battlefield. Marines will literally charge into machine gun fire, into rocket fire, to go grab that injured soldier so that they don't die alone in enemy hands. What level of fear have we induced in mankind that we are letting our revered elderly and our young people who are dying from these conditions die alone? It is worse than rocket fire. It is worse than this. And we've generated that level of fear around a virus that looks to have a mortality similar to flu. What are we doing with this tyranny of fear? We are tearing apart the very fabric of what it means to be human. There is an innate drive in us to stay connected, to stay in one another's presence, to have fellowship with one another. It's written into our constitution that you will not block public gatherings. You will not block the ability for us to get together and, and practice our spiritual faith, uh, to practice our spiritual experience. And if anything is a hallowed ground of spiritual uh, environment, it is the birthplace of a child and the birthplace of an elder person about to transition to the other side. There are two births that happen to humankind. And the first, of course, must be extraordinary. If, if we could remember it all, how amazing would it have been? When you are in the womb of your mother, you can hear sounds muffled and you can hear the voice of, of your family members. You can see, hear the bark of a dog. You can hear the closing of a door. It's muffled, but you can hear it. You can see the light filtering through in the morning through the skin of your mother's belly and through the wall of the womb. You can see these transitions of, of shadows moving by. You can see this uh, beautiful world and it's all in red hues. It's reds and oranges like an internal sunset happening around you. And then there's peaceful darkness in the night and it's silent and you've got your mother's heartbeat right next to you. And you've got this extraordinary holy of holies, this protected space that you're in. Then suddenly at the end of nine months, your entire human existence so far only knows this space. You have this catastrophic event where intense pressure is put on you and you're being covered in microbes as you you go down this and your your immune system has never seen this your, your whole body has never seen this whole body of life that's that's coating you and you're you're in this transit of dark tunnel and compression your heart rate is 180 uh, and pushing 250 at moments because you are in this intense physiologic pressure state and you think you are dying I think that must pass the, the tissue level's possibilities. I think I'm dying because the light is gone the, and all I hear is, is crushing pressure and all I'm experiencing is, and then suddenly you're in the light, all the pressure is gone and you can't, ex, can't believe the beauty around you. The face of your mother is mind boggling. There's a thousand colors in just the iris of her eye that's looking in your face. And you're staring at that for a second. And then there's this like halo of light and color from this explosion of, of filaments out of your mother's head that we call hair. And it's creating these rainbows of color. And so you, all you can do is stare above your mother's hair and look at that for a while. And then suddenly there's this extraordinary you know, scene as it unfolds of greens and blues and your first sunset. You can't believe how beautiful the world is. And then we go through a forgetting of the magic that we are alive right now. And we forget that we are in an exquisite miracle of beauty every day. And we are dumbed down to uh, an existence of drywall box with no microbiome diversity into an off-gassing plastic car that off-gasses cyanide and, and micro uh, uh, toxins into the environment. And we show up in an office building and carpeted cubicles that off-gas carcinogens all day long. And then we go to a grocery store and pick up a bunch of food that was treated with carcinogens before it was harvested. And then we go home and we sit around uh, blue light you know, devices that, that reset our, our and screw up our, our circadian rhythms and we get depressed and we get disconnected. And then we go through this extraordinary event and suddenly there's darkness in an ICU and you, your eyesight is failing and you're starting to see things through 
through the glass darkly again and you see shadows and you see this and there's an intense sense of pressure as your body starts to collapse in on itself. You can't breathe, your heart rate's failing, everything's starting to go and then you go into this dark tunnel. You can hear voices perhaps and you have this overwhelming sense of biology is being crushed into oblivion right now. And then you come out the other side and it's more beautiful and more bright than you could have ever imagined. And then suddenly that doctor resuscitates you and pulls you back into the body and you tell that doctor, it's so much prettier on the other side. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to rebirth. I just found out that I'm fully accepted on the other side. I'm a beautiful creature of light energy, and I am excited to be there. The danger that we have right now is not a virus. The danger that we have right now is that we have sterilized ourselves from death. We have created sterility around the death moment, which is ultimately our reason we're here. We are here for a transformative experience where we find out we are not biologic, we are spiritual beings. We are light beings. We are spiritual beings trapped in a biologic shell for a moment. And we have learned to fear all of that. And for that, we are missing the beauty of life. We are missing the beauty of the face of our lovers, of the face of our children. We are missing the beauty of one another. And we are letting each other die alone out of fear of some genetic material that floats through the air and has since the beginning of time. We have the wrong story going on. And it is not a conspiracy theory. It is not some government laboratory. It is the human emotion of fear. And we are afraid of our own death, which is our rebirth. We need to reorient ourselves to life. We need to put into line not just our medical system. We need to put into line our manufacturing and consumer goods industries. We need to put into line our energy and, and transportation industries in line with biology. It has shown us how to produce energy cleanly. It has shown us how energy is produced at the cellular level. We could do that. We could put all of it back in line. And first and foremost, we need to celebrate life and stop fearing death. And we will act much differently towards each other. We don't need a revolution. We need an evolution. We need to evolve past our fear and we need to find love and love is not a thing. It's not something to be grabbed. It is an experience. And I believe it is, you know, through the wisdom of one of my deep friends, Patrick Gentempo gave me this extraordinary gift last year. Love is not the fabric of everything. The fabric of everything is beauty. And our reaction to seeing the beauty is love. If you feel unloved, if you feel like you don't know what it means to love yourself or your loved one who is dying right now, then stop trying to generate the, the human emotion of love and start witnessing the beauty, and then you will experience the love. We need to see the beauty of the virome. We need to see the beauty of the microbiome. We need to see the beauty of a human breath. We need to see the beauty of a planet that can breathe when given the opportunity. We need to see the beauty of human touch, a hug. When we go back to a normal, I hope it's not the old normal. We need to find a new normal in these coming weeks. When they say you can go back to your normal activities, do not go back to your normal activities. Act much differently. See the beauty everywhere. Engage with the beauty, most of all in your fellow humanity. And let's love each other in the experience of each other's beauty to realize a much different future.